Okay, happy 2024, and this is your early 2024 market update. And uh, in front of you is an email from me with uh, some stats, and I'm not going to go heavy on the stats because um, personally they're kind of boring, right? Um, nobody really wants to look at a whole bunch of pie charts and, and understand things. But I will share some of them with you. You can look below, and I've broken it down into singles, condos, um, and uh, even the smaller multifamilies. Uh, if you have um, a particular need for additional information, and obviously if you want to look at uh, your particular property and understand its value, reach out to us. But uh, the big, big one, and what I've heard from many, many sellers is, hey, did I miss it, right? We all know that values spiked during COVID. And um, is there a perception that uh, if I had only sold in 2022 or early 2023, uh, I would have made X percent more. And the good news for you is no, uh, the market has certainly leveled off. We're not seeing these 10 and 20 percent increases year over year. Uh, but to put it in perspective, uh, many of us have been in our homes on average in the United States, it's seven years. But in our area, it's more like 12 years. Think of the time pre-COVID 2018. So if we use that date five years ago, the average home in Portland, the median sales price for a single family home in Portland was $316,000. What was it last year? A whopping $550,000. Now, this is the median price, takes away the high, takes away the low. So that's a 74% increase in that period of time. So even if we're up or down a little bit from that, we're talking about home runs, um, no matter what. So congratulations. If you're in your home, uh, you're in great shape. The other thing I'll keep in mind to you is uh, with such low interest rates that most of us have, you know, most of us have refinanced over these last, you know, 15 years or 10 years of being in a home and took advantage of 2.9 and 3.5. Um, the lowest level of new listings and listings happened last year uh, than any other year in history that they've been keeping track. Um, so we've had very few sales, whether it's here or nationally, right? Very low, low inventories, which further buoys property values. So we've had the highest prices and the lowest inventories, and we expect that to continue. Uh, beyond that, it's obviously very difficult to build, and uh, the cost of building is very difficult, even with changes in state law like LD 2003. So that's the that's the good news to you as sellers. Um, and as we get into some of those stats, take a peek at that and certainly reach out. Um, and part of these beginning of the year uh, emails is to, um, you know, I guess take a look into the future in that crystal ball. And although that's, that's obviously fraught with a whole bunch of issues, uh, here's what we're seeing now, right now in the marketplace early 2024. Now, if I'm a buyer, right, what, what's happening? Um, there's two things that are happening. You know, number one, I'd be a buyer right now. It's a it's a lot better time, in my opinion, to be a buyer uh, than it's going to be in May and June because I'm anticipating bidding wars and I'm anticipating a tremendous amount of buyers coming back into the market because of lower potential interest rates and more supply. So if you're a buyer, get out there, keep looking, make the offers. Uh, many sellers are not holding the auctions, right? This idea of I'm going to list it on a Tuesday, I'm going to collect offers seven days later. We're just listing things. And that allows you day one to come in, maybe make an offer that's 10,000 over, not the bidding war thing that may happen again, like it was happening during COVID where you'd have to go a hundred over, let them rent back for six months and write them the love letter, right? You don't have to do all of that usually right now. That being said, the market isn't anemic, right? It's still actually quite active and things are going multiple offers but not everything. That's the beauty of working with somebody who's qualified and knows this. The other side of it is, you know, sellers either do it right at the start or they go too high. And if that seller went too high and the property has been listed as little as three or four weeks, don't be afraid to make that offer. We have helped recently two different buyers. One of them secure a property. This is a million dollar property, over a million, secure that property for over $250,000 under where the seller was listed. And that seller had been listed since May of last year. Uh, this, the buyers were thinking, well, they're not going to go that low. Well, let's make the offer. Many times sellers don't want to keep chasing that down. Maybe they 
are interested in making a deal, but they don't just want to negotiate against themselves. So don't be afraid to make the offer. Uh, we're dealing with another buyer client right now. Their, their sweet spot is about six fifty. We're looking at stuff up to 800 And yes, you can make an offer and um, it might happen. So don't be afraid. Let them say no. Don't say no to yourself and never make the offer. Okay. So that's what's happening right now for buyers. Sellers right now, uh, you can come on the market. Um, it's looking like it's going to be mild. Um, however, the weather is kind of crazy. I do think it's going to be a better time to list in the spring and early summer. And really, the uh, the ideal months are April, May. But you can certainly come on in March and June. Uh, again, you want to get on as soon as you can, uh, really from sort of this mid-March or beginning of April uh, in that entire process, really from the beginning of April, the sooner the better from there up until about uh, two weeks before July 4th weekend. Um, that being said, don't rush. Plan, plan ahead, plan for success, reach out to us. Uh, creating a more turnkey house for that buyer is critically important. Um, you've got to make sure it photographs incredibly well. How it looks online is more important than how it looks in person because we got to get them there. Buyers only have so much bandwidth, right? And many of them are from away. So they're going to have one opportunity to get that inbox email from you for that new listing. They're going to open that up. It has to look as good as it possibly can. So that's why that picture day and planning ahead for that picture day is so critically important. I can't say that enough. And that's why our team has really taken a wonderful job and has developed something called launch versus list. Now, anybody can list your house. If you want to launch that, if you really want to have that receive the maximum amount of views and get the maximum amount of showings within that first period of time, which of course is your best time to sell and to sell at the highest possible price. Going back to the buyer side, once the shine is off, right? If you didn't capture them in that first one or two weeks, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, the price is going to go down. You're not going to get the bidding war. Nobody's going to compete against themselves and just drive it up artificially. But if you do it right and you list a little bit low, again, thinking of that you know, beginning of April on, we plan ahead, we plan for success, the pictures are great, the prices may be a little bit under. Maybe we deploy that seven-day bid phase again and we're still garnering multiple offers. Um, but again, it's not every agent. It's how you do things. It's not necessarily, you know, th there's no magic in what we're doing, but we do approach it in a very different way, in a very systematic way that we're happy to share with you. And that can uh, lead to, uh, you know, 20, 30, 50, hundred thousand dollars more in your pocket. And that's real money. So that's what, ha that's, what's happening with sellers right now. Uh, if I think about the spring, it really ties into what I've been saying. I think it's going to be very busy for buyers. I think it's going to be very competitive for buyers. Uh, you're going to have to be ready to, uh, be patient, right? There's two things, the two P's, right? Patient and pounce. You may have opportunities where things come on the market and because you've started to look now, uh, you're then an informed buyer. You know, hey, that property is purposely underpriced or that property is overpriced. You only get that from being actively in the market. And then you feel confident, not just in what your agent says, but confident in knowing, hey, that's a $450,000 house. Uh, they listed it at $410,000. Uh, I feel confident in offering this because they're artificially going low. Uh, and again, you're going to develop that from being out there and looking at things. Um, so when it comes to the spring, again, I think what we're going to see is multiple offers. So make sure you're pre-qualified, make sure you're ready to go. And not everybody's going to do that, that delayed offer thing. So be ready to offer on the spot or the next day. Uh, we are anticipating multiples again. We are anticipating a lot of activity. So you may have to go back to the stuff that we were doing in the height of COVID. You know, the love letter, the picture of you and the puppy and the kids, um, letting somebody rent back, waiving inspections, uh, you know, because buyers are now used to rates at, say, 7, 7.5, even 6.9. If those dip down to 6.5 or even a 5, um, you know, it's going to be the reverse of what happened last year in the middle of summer where, hey, we're all used to 3, and, and, and it just froze at 4.5 or 5, right? We're coming off from this, and uh, we're anticipating, again, it to be incredibly active. So I think it's a very good time for you guys to be out there thinking about that now, 
and just to be ready for the spring and be ready to pounce on those. Um, if we stick with buyers and we go into the summertime, uh, what I would say to you is if it doesn't happen then, we're anticipating the seasonality to happen. And come July 4th weekend through the summer, it should be slower. So anybody, any seller that, that shot the moon and went too high in the spring and got a little too aggressive and is on middle of July uh, is going to be in for a world of hurt, right? Uh, because uh, there's a lot fewer buyers that time of year. And um, uh, then they're opening themselves up to either chasing them down with price drops or lowball offers, which include inspections and all these other things. So uh, be patient as a buyer, but also be ready to pounce, okay? The two Ps. As a seller, uh, again, plan for success. Reach out to us, right? Um, and um, if you do list, still list reasonable, right? This is not the time if we are on a bit of a plateau in the market to then just go 10% over what the competitive landscape was and the comps showed in that uh, analysis that your agent is doing. So interview a few agents, uh, get with somebody, make sure your house is prepped, uh, go to the market in a very purposeful way, that launch versus list. But if I look out at the spring, I think it's going to be a fabulous time to be a seller. It's going to be bidding wars all over again. So congratulations if you've waited. But my cautionary tale to you is not only just the summer, but we're in an election year, everybody, right? So I think we're in this sort of, um, I don't know, honeymoon phase, if we want to call it that. <laughs> there's usually a lot of good things that happen in election years. Uh, there's not a lot of upsetting of the apple cart, whether that's from the Federal Reserve or the economy or other things. Uh, after that, however... Um, and this is sort of the idea of, you know, try to do it now, whether you're a buyer, rates are low, and that's a good thing. If you're a seller, well, rates are low. We don't know what's going to happen in the fall. We don't know what's going to happen post-election. Uh, so, uh, I think there's a, there's a bit of fear with that. And I'm not trying to over inflate that. I'm not a panic guy. I don't think the sky is going to fall. However, um, if you've waited, uh, it, it's probably not going to get exponentially better than this. And I think because the rate drop, uh, we should see another record year. Uh, but if I'm pr you know, putting on that, that uh, Swami hat and I'm really going to that crystal ball, when I think about next year, I do feel that we could have a subdued market uh, depending on or really probably any way that the, uh, the election goes. But again, that post-election market could be... Um, a little bit tougher for, for everybody. So I think if you're going to do it and you're, you're, you're looking at your, your next three to five years and you're saying, hey, I should be doing this, uh, I think there's strong evidence that say, uh, do it now. You're probably going to get out at the top of that wave versus somewhere on the downturn. Okay, the last section is it matters and you matter. And the idea here is um, a look at our lives in a, in a bit of a more holistic way and uh, what we're doing and how we're doing it. And obviously, um, uh, we need to be thinking about that for how we treat our family and how we treat each other. And, um, and, and the way that we treat um, uh, ourselves, right, and, and, and taking care of ourselves. So it really does begin with that and your mental health, your physical health, and uh, getting your house in order so that you can approach the world in a very positive way. Uh, we take that uh, approach when it comes to ourselves, my team, and our company and the way that we treat people and the way we treat our vendors and hopefully the way that we treat you. So I want to thank you for uh, trusting us. I want to thank you for your attention today. And I want to promise to you that we're going to do everything we can if we're entrusted to help you um, to achieve your goals. And um, uh, again, uh, here's to a great 2024. I uh, look forward to staying in touch. And you can follow us, obviously, on a whole host of social media platforms. And you can follow me and learn more about these episodes and other podcasts at Home with Tom Landry. Take care.